everybody. Welcome to another cost-benefit analysis video. Today I'm going to be touching on assumptions. So what are assumptions and why do we need them? In fact, they can be some of the scariest things you've got to deal with when you do a cost-benefit analysis. Hence the Fright Nights Freddy, Freddy Krueger um, t-shirt here. See him outlined here. So okay, so I'm going to explain what an assumption is and why we need them. So when you do an analysis, you're not going to get all the information you need. There's going to be gaps in that information. You've got to fill it one way or another. And there's a several ways of going about that, but the, um, the best way, well, not always the best way, depending on how you go about it, but a way of doing that is using assumptions. So before we um, can actually jump into assumptions, how do we get to that point when we realize, okay, we don't have enough information? So I'm not going to cover off too much on this today, but it's a methodology. You need to come up with a methodology, determine a way of going about doing that. So once you've determined what your methodology is and what your approach is going to be, then you need to collect data and you need to determine what data you need and then you get into the data collection process. So whether it's, you know, you're getting stuff out of guidelines, you're doing your own research, you might be using journal articles, you have databases and all sorts of stuff. And hopefully you can get the data you need to match your methodology. So with your methodology, you probably would have identified some potential gaps. And then the data probably would confirm those gaps and maybe even identify a few other gaps. So when we've got gaps, we need to fill those gaps. And the way to do that is to come up with assumptions. And that's where it gets very, very tricky because you're dealing with unknowns here. So even if you don't know something, you need to have some supporting evidence. Like, for example, you may not know what particular maintenance is going to cost going forward. But what you do know is, well, what you should know is what other projects have done in the past. And you can use some of those numbers and you can um, incorporate that into your analysis. So what we call um, that is uh, rules of thumb. And rules of thumb can actually be achieved by looking at some of your past projects. You can't always cover off on all of those things. So sometimes you've got to go a little bit further afield. We may actually need to... Um, look at some overseas studies, for example, or you could be looking at some other projects or out-of-state projects and stuff like that, just to get a general idea what sort of numbers you could be dealing with. And then you may have to manipulate those numbers in order to fit your analysis. So again, you've got to be very, very careful on that because even small changes in assumptions can result in dramatically different results. In fact, I've got a conference paper that's available on this channel that actually looks at several projects and what happens when you have different assumptions and how the results can change dramatically. But there is one way of covering off on that and that's called sensitivity analysis. So if you have a sensitivity analysis, you can actually go back in and play around with some of your assumptions. So you'd have certain uncertainty about things like, uh, let's say, population growth, for example. You, you made an assumption that it's going to grow at 3%. And you got data that supports and that's pretty good but you know things don't always follow trends things can happen you know there may be a massive burst in population because of uh, migration to a particular area or maybe a development in that area attracts a lot of people on the other hand people could be moving away you may even have negative population growth in that area so you have the sensitivity analysis so you can actually change those assumptions and see what happens to your analysis by doing that so sensitivity analysis is actually a very very important tool when measuring your assumptions all right, that just takes us to the end of today's presentation. It's so like I mentioned earlier, if you want to know a little bit more about assumptions and go into a lot more detail, you can look at my conference paper that's on this YouTube channel as well. So if you enjoyed this, um, this video, just uh, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos about cost-benefit analysis, click the subscribe button. And I've also got several other presentations as well relating to other areas of economics. And I've also got vegan economics in there as well, and even some economic modeling and games. So that could be good fun. So remember to click the subscribe button. Thank you very much.